Hello everyone and welcome to the demo of Handle Contact Light. So today I will be talking about Handle Contact Light, a bit about why we decided to develop it, uh, what it is. I'll do an online demo here. You can see on the Android uh, screen on the screen. And I also I'll talk about um, Configurator. And we developed the Configurator to help individuals as well as resellers determine what type of HHC uh, the client would be best suited for. And then we'll talk a bit about the roadmap, uh, the feature gaps um, for the rest of this month. And then I'd also like to say that uh, I'll tell you a bit about what uh, we booked this meeting with in case you hadn't noticed. So anyway, to start with, why don't we um, talk a little bit about why we decided to develop Handheld Contact Lite. And one of the main reasons was because we had a lot of customers during this time. They used to have three or four HHC licenses or 10 licenses. Now the company shrunk down and they said, hey, we really love it, um, but we just can't afford it. And so we thought, well, what can we do to, to one, uh, give them a bit more of a benefit, to give them something during the COVID times when business is down, and also to keep them engaged. And so that was the main thing. So keep engaged, well, what does that mean? It means that they still use Handle Contact Lite handle contact, but they're using light version. And then when business picks up or if new people coming in, they want their contacts on their device, they can now uh, sync that up. And as you see, there are limitations to it and that will, we feel will drive people to purchase either handle contact classic or handle contact API for the Android and the iPhone. So in that way, uh, it's very much uh, good for business uh, it's goodwill, and we, we don't say that lightly. We're serious about the goodwill part because we're, we want to see how much we can help our clients because uh, their future is our future. We're, we're tied inexplicably together. Um, and then the big thing is a feeder for you and for us. And so we keep getting um, opportunities. As we know, the more add-ons they use, even simple ones, uh, the more likely they are to stick with ACT. So given that introduction, I'd like to also say that Ken uh, will be monitoring the questions. So if you uh, hear him pipe in between and try interrupting me, just ignore him. No, um, he will be uh, reading and responding to the questions as well. And so with that, why don't we start with the uh, demo here on the Android. As you can see, I'm just ready to install. So let's say you've gone to the App Store, you've downloaded it, you click Install. So I want to go through the whole experience with you. And you will notice I am putting using our production database, but uh, I've already uh, contacted our CTO as soon as this is uh, demo is over. My uh, password is changing really quickly. And so now I'll just click open. And so this is the experience that you and your users will be going through. So this isn't uh, um, a different version I'm showing you. So allow handle contact light to access to your contacts. Yes. And to manage your phone calls. Yes. So my name, again, I have not registered beforehand. I'm starting right from scratch. So it's not like I have to go to the website and um, register it ahead of time. Oh, I've got to make sure uh, we get some complaints that it isn't working, but typically that's spelling mistakes. As you see, I keep make making sure the same one over again, enough, yes. which I am demonstrating. It's part of the demo. You've got to show people. Okay, now all we do is click sign up. And if I'm working with a reseller, I just click there and then I can populate the name there. I will take that off. I'll just click sign up. So from here, I get emailed by signing up using use this act, licensing agreement, and then uh, fields marked with a plus or mandatory registration code will be sent to your email. So let me just show you what that looks like. I'm gonna just grab my email here. And I'll just open it up and just pull it over so you can see what it looks like. Uh, it's not pulling over for me, so let me just go. Move this aside. Okay, so right in here, here's your product code, 071. Two seven nine, and then I sign up. A 
got to make sure I have no. One, two, seven, nine. Oh, here we go. Invalid registration code. Vic, I think you were supposed to click on have code. Oh, sorry. All right. Would you enter that in? So it sent you another email. So check that one and enter it. So as always, Vic is extremely committed to going through Nine, three, all the end user kind of errors that your customers oh, yeah. might Oops. be able to make. Okay, I was clicking too fast there. Let me go again. Sorry, I've started again here. A bit more thorough than normal. Yes, well, I just wanna make sure that if I do it two or three times, everybody will, um, really get a good handle on it. And this time I, you see, I didn't misspell keystroke. I'll click. And then half code, 687, 998. Okay, so now we put in our uh, API address. Web. I can tell. Web. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm. I, I, you might laugh, but I'm very used to uh, the iPhone and the uh, Android keyboard is a bit different for me, so I keep goofing up. There we go. So the first thing we do is once we go through the login process, login successful. And here we go. So first thing we do, we have to pick a group. So again, I encourage your clients to do this ahead of time. I'm going for the ACC group. And again, you can only choose one group to synchronize. And then we hit continue. And these are all the fields that you're syncing. And again, it's all standard fields that we're syncing. Uh, plus, uh, we are also doing, there's five phone fields, two address blocks. We do spouse, birthday, website, ID status, referred by, and messenger ID. So those are all the fields that you're, you're getting. So there's no option at the end user to customize that. Again, opportunities are grayed out because we can't sync opportunities. Sorry, let me move this back to the center of the screen. And now I start download. So again, download goes very quickly. It's just making connection with the API. And typically, like I have another database I sync with about 32,000. And those two 30,000 takes a couple of minutes, about three or four minutes, and we got everything down there. So again, now we've got all our information here. So all I do is, is click my back button. Here's all my contacts. So the first thing I wanna show you is just the dashboard. Dashboard is my contacts, task lists, and opportunities. So let me go uh, to the bottom. So I'm gonna show you something here on the bottom. We have the contacts, calendar, task lists, opportunities. So let's say I'm gonna click on my calendar. So at the bottom, as you can see, it says this feature. Oh, I'll click on it again so you can see it. This feature is available only with a paid subscription. And then same thing with task list. And same thing with opportunities. So again, it lets you know that uh, there's these opportunities are there, uh, but you've got to go with the full um, subscription. So I'm going to click on the dashboard in the upper left-hand corner on the menu button on the left. And here we have favorites, we have searches. 
We have import export contacts. Let's see what we do when we click there. Oh, this is not a two-way sync. So remember, this is only a one-way sync from your database to your device. It's more like a Rolodex. That's what uh, Ken has called it, and it's very much a Rolodex. And so it's only once a week it syncs over, uh, and it's not continuous. So again, this is all to let people know that there's other options. So back to the dashboard here again. Yeah, Vic, if, then, I can just, if I can just jump in one second. One sure. of the, the terms that we're trying to consistently use is even when you saw the um, the message to, to start the download, we're always referencing it in terms of downloads, not syncing. Uh, syncing naturally implies a two-way link. Um, this is a download. So in one week, if you download again, um, it will be a destructive download. It will replace whatever you have on your device. So we'll be surfacing as many messages uh, to customers uh, as possible to remind them not to make changes to the database because it's a, you know static and, and those changes will not be passed back up to ACT. So you know when you're communicating to your customers, one, refer to it as a Rolodex, which implies more of like the static data that it is, and refer to download instead of syncing. Excellent, thank you. Okay, so here, let's go to the contacts. So here I've got all my contacts. Let's uh, pick a few of them. Aaron, um, only when using this app, allow access. So here's one in the upper right-hand corner, you see a star there, that's for my favorite. So I'm just gonna click on a few of these here and make them favorites. So now I can go back to my dashboard I can click there and I can click on my favorites. So the nice thing is it's got my favorites listed. Oh, sorry. I can go through and these are, let's say I call Mark all the time. That's how you use the favorites. As most of you know, it's people that you have in contact uh, regularly. Let me go back to my contacts again. So the other thing I wanna show you is right from here, we'll do act today. So from here, you can do a variety of things. You can still call, just like you can out of handle contact. You can also sell, send the SMS. Um, you can email, but it will not create histories. As Ken said, nothing syncs back to the, the main database. So everything is the same as it was before in terms of ability for the features, but it doesn't sync information back. So the other thing you can do in the upper right-hand corner, I'll just show you that again, with a three buttons up here, click on that, and you can share, you can duplicate, you can delete, you can go to your settings or download all. Now you can click download all, but it won't download because it only allows, let me just click on that then you can see. And the bottom it says you have exceeded the maximum number of, whoops, we'll do that again, I can't read that fast, of download is one per week. So again, this feature is disabled. So that way, if people say, hey, I need that, and they call you, um, we will not change anything on the HHC Lite, but you can direct them to uh, purchase one of the other products, handle contact products. And, and so, Vic, quick, quickly to that point, um, we've been asked quite a bit by resellers if they can download it to their device, even if they have classic or the full handheld contact API version, and it is available. You can download uh, all three versions. Um, handheld contact Lite is completely compatible with uh, other installations of handheld contact. Yeah, yeah, and, and good point, Ken, because I, I run all three on mine, Classic, HHC API, and the Lite, so it works very well, no, no problems there. The other thing we also have as regular is we have the mapping, so if you click on uh, the map, it takes you right to Google Maps, and I'll just go back to here. And so it's very straightforward, very simple to use. Now, the one area I wanna show you is we will go back to the contacts here. And then I wanna hit the tag in the upper right-hand corner. So here, let's say I'm gonna tag, we'll just tag a whole bunch of people here. And so then, do you see the, the lightning bolt right here? Let me click on that. I can look up the tag, so let me look the tag. So these are the ones. So right from here, if I click the lightning bolt, I can email all tagged, I can SMS, or I can map them. So again, it's very straightforward, very simple to use. And I won't do that here because this phone is a demo. It's not connected to the, the network. And so I won't uh, obviously do that here. But then the other thing I can do here, I'll just clear all the tagged. 
and then I'm back to my basic. So again, it's very simple to use, uh, to go through, uh, keep talking to your clients about it as a Rolodex, a way just to get your basic contact information through uh, without having to um, purchase a full, full unit. So that's the demo of uh, HHC Lite. Do you have any questions on that? Ken, any questions on it so far? Um, Lanny asked about, uh, does it work on Android tablets? I answered that it works with um, all phones and all tablets in the iOS and, um, and uh, Android that we've tested. So Excellent. the answer is yes. Any other questions? Uh, Renee has that? asked about um, caller ID. Yeah, caller ID, let's go here. And if we go to, whoops, let me. I wouldn't worry about answering her question. She also says she was bummed that she wasn't selected as the favorite. I get that a lot from her. <laughs> Uh, she's a, a true favorite. You know, these other ones are just surface flings, you know, that kind of thing. But anyway, <laughs> we'll stop there. How's that? Okay. So the, <laughs> if there's no more questions, what I want to do is if go to our website, handlecontact.com, the homepage. And what we've developed is called, I wanted to call it the configurator, but somebody uh, nicks that one. It's a configurator. So the yeah. question is, which HHC is right for you? And I'm gonna just open this up here because a lot of times uh, people ask, well, what should I be using? Well, if you just take your clients and you can send this to your clients, it's a wonderful, uh, or you can take your client through this. So let's see your ACT Pro, we continue. You have HHC compliance, I'll say right. no. HIPAA, HIPAA, HIPAA compliance, I mean. Okay, HIPAA compliance, continue. So right away, it takes me HHC Secure Plus. So if I have Pro and need compliance, this is my only option. So if I just go back, oh, we'll start over here. So again, we'll hit Pro, level of, I'll hit Continue, level of security, no, Continue. Um, no, I don't need a password. Okay, it takes me to Classic, HHC Classic. And so for each of them, you can just go through and it's very uh, simple to use. Your administrator, let's say you're restricted. Do you have HHC compliance? I'll put yes. HIPAA compliance. Oh. We, we don't have our own standard yet. And it takes me secure plus. So anyway, it's very simple to use. And let's go with description by Swift page is my only options HHC API. So again, we really encourage you, if you have any questions, um, we encourage you to use this, very simple to use, and it really helps people make a decision as they're going through. And so you, I just want to- You can refer the customers to it as well, like why burn up their own time? You can refer yep. the customers to it. And um, what, you know, we, we didn't create this out of a vacuum. We created it because when we first introduced this, we actually had a lot of pro customers that didn't understand the API implications uh, purchase it online. And then we very quickly had to tell them that it wasn't available. So so this is a good um, good utility to steer your customers towards as well. And it's on handle contact. So you don't have to. You don't, yeah, so you don't send them to, to Keystroke, send them here uh, going through. Um, the next thing we want to talk a bit about and Ken, you can talk to this as well, is a roadmap for the feature gaps. Now, as you know, there's feature gaps, those of you that have used handheld contact uh, um, API, uh, there's quoting, um, mapping. invoicing, mapping, a bunch of features there that aren't available. We, we The trajectory we're on right now with the uh, dev is that those will be ready end of November. So by end of November, we wanna have feature parity between handheld contact classic and handle contact API. So then the main question will be between the differences at that point is um, how many contacts, if you need more than 45,000 contacts, API is your only option. Um, if you have um, Pro, obviously your only option is the classic, but again, you can go through and then customers can decide uh, which version they want based on their needs. Um, again, we have a lot of people using the API and the classic, and it depends on your um, your preference 
um, more so. I prefer classic, Ken prefers the API, um, mm -hmm. but you can also run both. And we do have some customers that are running both. They bought classic, they liked it, and now they bought an API and they're running both. And I assume when it comes up, up for renew, either renew both of them or they will make their choice which ones they want. So again, uh, it will cause no no degradation of experience or, or no glitches at all. They are not connected. And that's the thing about the licensing. People always ask is, well, why do I need to buy, I can't transfer my Classic account to API. It is a totally different licensing system. And, that, and that's the reason why. So we have to maintain the, the two codes off, obviously, but then we have to maintain the two different licensing systems as well when they don't speak to each other. They're, they're very different uh, going through. There is, there is something I wanted to raise. Um, a lot of people, we, we tried to document a fair bit of, of you know, some of the differences um, in terms of experience. I mean, obviously, between Classic and API, you can download the information, you know, a lot faster. But one of the the things that people don't understand is that there was so much um, about the SDK that we were able to kind of like limits of it that we were able to overcome because of the Windows console. So we were able to um, kind of massage and clean up data and do some extra um, integrity checks through the, the Windows console. That isn't available when we're working with the API because we're, there is no um, middleware in the way. Um, so we're really quite uh, subject to the limits of the API. So I wanted to explain uh, what a couple of those common ones are and what we've done to overcome them. Uh, if anyone is a regular user of the API, they've probably come to notice that, um, you know, they'll get to a point and they go to sync and they'll get a message saying that, you know, you have more than five contacts um, discrepancy between your, your, your device and your, your act group. We prompt you to download all, okay? Now, the first thing is um, why we're doing that. The API doesn't have an endpoint for detecting the quantity of contacts in a group or more specifically, um, you know, who is dynamically added to a group. Hopefully over time that will be fixed, but for now we, we have to kind of do that that count as opposed to a reconciliation, okay? So that's why it, it prompts you to do that. And when it does so, it only is downloading the address book. So anything that you've got in your, in your other parts and under opportunities, under uh, activities, all of those things um, will be preserved. I had someone report that they, they thought they were losing activities. We've had no other uh, report of that. So that might be a cause by doing a, a regular download all. Download all literally means that. It's gonna destroy everything and, and replace all the data with what's being downloaded. Uh, that's the first thing. Second thing is, um, it, we, we've run into cases where let's say you clear an activity on act and then you go to to sync it's not being cleared on your device and that's because th there's just a limit with the the api where it doesn't have um, and we're pushing them and we think this will be fixed um, it, within the next month it doesn't have the ability to um, to track uh, a cleared item um, as you know flagging the edit attribute so when we go to to check, there's no endpoint um, because we're trying to um, to hit the endpoint for uh, what's being edited, and there's nothing there. Okay, so uh, to that end, what we're going to be implementing over the next month is the same kind of feature with contacts, where if you go to um, download and it detects a discrepancy between the number of contacts it's expecting and and what it has, it's going to prompt you to download all the activities. Okay, so a clean download of all the activities. So, you know, just be mindful. Those are some of the, the measures that we're, we have to do with API uh, that we've never previously had to do with Classic uh, because of the missing endpoints. Now, I've been assured that one of the bigger investment points with ACT over the next six months is in the API. So I'm hoping that, you know, some of these, these limits um, can be addressed and we won't have to kind of implement these workarounds. But that's these are some of the things that you're gonna see over the course of the next month. Um, and it's totally to do with limits to the API. Okay, back to you, Vic. Excellent, uh, thank you very much, Ken. Well, that brings us to the end of the, the webinar. We want to keep it under 30 minutes, so uh, we've done that. Um, next week, I am doing a webinar and I'm gonna use my iPhone so you won't see as many glitches in my typing and everything else. Uh, I'm doing a demo next week, Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for end users. 
Uh, you're welcome to attend as well. Anybody should attend today if you want to see it again. But you're welcome to attend next week's. If you go to our uh, on Keystroke and on the right hand side, if you go to keystroke.ca and just if we're on the home page, just scroll down. Oh, sorry. And further down here under training, upcoming events. And here we have a uh, reseller webinar was today. And then this is the one here for next week. So feel free to uh, register yourself and register your clients or have your clients register uh, for this public webinar. Again, um, I won't be talking about keystroke during this webinar. I'll be talking about strictly about handheld contact. And then again, showing the feature gaps, that type of thing. So it'll be a short demo. Uh, we should be done in about 20, 25 minutes, uh, but it's definitely worth sending your clients to see it. We will also be putting a recording of it. Uh, we'll be recording it. And if we go back to keystroke.ca, uh, you can download the recording. If you go down again to uh, training and then our keystroke training videos. So uh, the video from next uh, Thursday about the uh, handle contact light will be up on the training videos by next Friday sometime. Well, we may also post that on handheldcontact.com as well under the uh, the HHC light page. Um, Vic, if I could just interrupt for one second, uh, Renee um, asked a question regarding the intervals for downloading. So Renee asked if um, if we limit it to once a week, do are we dictating which day they download? Um, basically, it's it's an interval limit. So if you download um, on a Thursday, um, you can't download again until the following Thursday, but there's no requirement that, um, to say that you have to download on a Thursday. So it can be the next Friday or, or months after that, for, for that matter. So it, it's not controlling which day you download, it's just controlling the, the next earliest day that you can do so. All right, excellent. thank you, Ken. So, so here where Ken is saying under handle contact, if you want to send them here, where we we put it, Ken, to register for the so, demo, under the um, no, I, actually I was referring to the recording. So the recording oh, okay. um, we're going to put. You see here on the fourth item here, uh, there's these four um, uh, these here? four picture blocks. Okay, so you've got the handheld contact light, the fourth one. Click here, and this is going to be the handheld contact page. We'll probably have a little play button uh, right below the um, uh, the headline. Okay, indicating, um, you know, to click on that and there'll be a little pop-up video of next week's presentation. We're gonna try to, like anything relating to this kind of stuff is going to be completely white labeled, no no uh, keystroke elements at all, and we'll surface them here. We're not gonna ask you guys to send customers to keystroke. Now, the, one, the last thing, which we will not be talking about next week, but I wanna let you know that everybody who registered for this registered with uh, Book to Act events, and it's a new program we have coming out. So hit, you can go to keystroke.ca and take a look at our, our Book 2 Act products. But Book 2 Act events was used for, for this webinar. So um, Ken, do you want to talk about that a minute? Um, just just briefly, um, but we're going to have a lot more information in the in the coming weeks. But I mean, everyone is familiar with, uh, with Book to Act. Um, I, I'm just for, for transparency's sake, we are reviewing the branding of that. Um, we're finding that SwiftPage is their, their um, branding requirements um, are becoming a little bit more rigid than they have in the past. So we're, we're looking at the naming of uh, Book to Act and there might be some modifications to that, but everyone's familiar with the, um, the online calendar links that, um, that has been available for the last couple of years. Um, what we did recently is we came out with an events version, which provides complete event management. And you guys have been, you know, part of a live demo of that. We've actually hosted this is the fourth um, webinar that we've hosted with it, and it allows you to generate uh, an event URL that provides people the ability to, you know, register for the event, provides them an ICS fi file to download to their calendar, um, and then after they register, they're emailed. Um, the location information and why are we doing that is we want to have visibility on who is being provided the the webinar links not just people that registered because if you just base it on registration then you know people can be putting in all kinds of bogus unverified information and you don't have visibility on precisely who is registered and who has uh, been shown the uh, the registration link in addition to that we've built in features of you know scheduled reminders before the event as well as um, follow-up emails Emails, all of which are configured um, in the one console and what's really nice is that 
you know, when you when you book with this, it online in this little console, it creates the activity and act. And then every person that registers online gets linked to that activity and put in a static group. So what you're seeing here that Vic is sharing with you is all the people that registered. Now, you'll see people like, um, you know, a couple of ACCs are in our database twice. So they were put into this group more than once because it's linking to the email. But, you know, if you want to, you know, quickly get visibility on who has registered so far, you're not going to a third party um, application, you're not going online, you're going to your ACT database and you're gonna be able to see this group was automatically created the moment that we, um, we created that event. So was the activity in ACT. And then if you make any changes to it, like let's say you, you need to change it by a half hour or you wanna change from a 30 minute event to a 60 minute event, those changes that are made online because they're dynamically linked to the, the, the activity ID, they instantly get reflected in ACT as well. And again, everything is through the API. Now, if you're noticing that there is a theme with this, it, it's quite deliberate. Everything we're doing is through the API. And, you know, as I, I indicated in my email out to everyone, you know, we know, uh, obviously we've got, you know, quite a few subscriptions. We know the challenges to getting people to renew their act subscriptions. We've seen, you know, obviously with the rescoping of support, the summer issues with Outlook and the absence of any, um, any version upgrade this year for the desktop, you know, people are getting challenged. You know, they're like, what, what is the value that I'm getting? Out of um, out of my ACT subscription. Well, the API is one that people have always understood, but they never really valued. So you know, a lot of our features that, although the programs that we're building, the calendar link, the um, the events management, and what soon's to be the online forms, because the booked back forms will have that out by the end of the month. All of these things are leveraging the API. Unsurprisingly, so is Handout Contact Lite. Um, we're not. We have no motivation whatsoever to build for the um, for classic because the classic they you know they're they're not paying. They're not they're not paying anything other than you know what they choose to. There's not a ongoing subscription cost uh, for them. So you know we don't have to entice them. But with um, subscription users, yeah, we we have to add the value. So everything that you're going to see from us in the coming uh, weeks and months is going to be built around um, adding value to the API as a um, as a feature of Act subscription. So hopefully that makes it easy for all of us to you know increase the value um, with our customers in maintaining their subscription. Excellent, thank you, Ken. Now I just want to add one more comment about this. Um book to act events the nice thing is once we're done here we can set up a whole ama campaign so once you run your event or your customers run their events they can set up a whole marketing campaign based off of this group so it's just it's very seamless uh, all the way through so that's it um, for today oh just one quick question we did have someone ask to, to show us again how to find the configurator on the handheld contact homepage. so just a quick reference to that again yeah we'll go to handle clock i'll just go to the home page just to make sure you see it here you just scroll down to the, you, we have the one uh, bar here. If you go down, which HHC is right for you? So it's the second level. Right there. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. Again, uh, webinar next Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, please join or have colleagues join, other HHCs, as well as your clients. So thank you very much, and have a great day, everyone.